Hello and welcome to the lecture for section 4.2. This is the second video for chapter 4. In this section, we're going to learn about Newton's laws of motion. Our goals for this section is to answer how did Newton change our view of the universe? What did he do that was so fundamental? And why are Newton's three, or what, are Newton's three laws of motion? We're going to define them, we're going to list them, and you need to remember these laws. All right, so how did Newton change our view of the universe? Well, Newton, back in the mid-1600s, right, kind of mid to late 1600s, you can see, so it would be the 17th century, realized the same physical laws that operate on Earth also operate in the heavens. That's why we're talking about him in an astronomy class, because those are the big revelations he came. He came up with following discoveries like those of Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler. All right, so Newton followed on these ideas and honestly was able to refine them and find the fundamental connections, okay? So he, he built on the idea of one universe and one set of laws for everything. There was nothing divine, nothing unnatural, nothing supernatural about things above Earth. They were all part of the same set of rules, okay? So he discovered laws of motion and gravity. Much more than just that, he did experiments with light, he defined calculus. Really, there's a huge body of scientific, scientific breakthroughs that can be attributed rightly to Newton. What, so what are Newton's three laws of motion? Well, we talked about forces in the last video. We defined them, we said that forces can change momentum. Forces create accelerations. Well, Newton's laws of motion are great because they help us understand how forces operate as well as how motion operates. So there's such a wonderful way of clearing up any potential confusion because the three laws are a complete description of how objects move, as long as they're not moving at very, very small scale or close to the speed of light. But most things aren't. So they're great for dealing with, say, the motion of planets and the motion of objects here on Earth. So here they are, Newton's three laws of motion, starting with the first law. This law is known as the law of inertia, and it says that an object moves at constant velocity unless a net force, so a non-zero sum of forces, acts to change its speed or direction. So the law of inertia. Inertia is a term given to anything that has mass. So inertia has units of kilograms, just like mass does, but unlike mass, it acknowledges that mass has a particular defined characteristic that it resists change. Any object that has mass will, will remain at rest if it's at rest and the net force on it is zero. Any object in motion will remain in that exact motion unless a non-zero net force acts on it. What's the property that, that makes that possible? The property of inertia. So it's kind of another way of saying Newton's first law is saying that objects have inertia if they have mass. Okay, hence the name, the law of inertia. All right, now Newton's second law. Okay, now there's two equivalent ways to express Newton's second law of motion. The more common way is to say that, is e that force equals mass times acceleration. The original way, and a way relating to the, a topic that we've mentioned quite a bit in the, in the last video, is that force equals a rate of change in momentum. And when I say original way, it's just the way that it was originally written about by, by Newton himself way back in the 1600s, because that's just kind of the language that the scientists used at that time. They talked more about momentum than acceleration, although I would certainly say it's more common today in a college classroom to talk about acceleration. Um, in equation form, or without words, we say F equals MA for you know, one way of writing Newton's second law. And then this way would be F equals a change in momentum. So a change represented by a delta symbol. Momentum is represented by the letter P, don't ask me why, over a change in time, which can be more probably clearly represented as a, a difference between values. So it'd be the final momentum minus the initial momentum. That's the same as saying delta P, because again, remember this little symbol, the Greek letter delta, uppercase, it represents any change, final minus initial, second minus first, just some change. Okay, so P final, F for final, minus P initial, I for initial. And it'll be the same thing for time, some final time minus some final, uh, minus some initial, excuse me, time. Okay, so there we go, two ways of writing 
force, what force is. And every one of these forces are the net force, right? It's not some individual force, it's the net force. Because as we saw, if there was a net force of zero like that on the elevator in the first video, there was no change in momentum, there was no acceleration. Even though there, there, was, there was forces, it was the sum of the forces that mattered. So that is Newton's second law. If you want a name for Newton's second law, like we gave a name to Newton's first law, you would actually call it the law of acceleration. Because what it really does is it shows us and defines the relationship between force and acceleration. Okay, now let's remind ourselves that acceleration around a curve is still acceleration. So to make that stated clearly, Newton's second law of motion tells us that an object going around a curve has an acceleration pointing towards the inside of the curve. You can't turn without a net force, right? And you can't turn for free. In fact, if that force is removed, this, the object will stop turning and will just continue in a straight line with the, the heading, you know, the direction that it has at the moment that the force is removed. A good example of that is spinning an object attached by a string overhead, where the force that keeps the object spinning is equal to mass times acceleration, according to Newton's second law. If that force is suddenly removed in the case of the string breaking, the object stops turning and it will continue at constant velocity. Now, if this was in outer space and there was no gravity, it would just continue at that constant velocity forever. It would reach a state with no force acting on it. If it's you know if there's no planets nearby to gradually tug at, tug on it, and so it would just then stay in that motion forever, not turning, not slowing down, not speeding up. Why? Because there's no net force acting on it, which is the same to say that it's going to stay in motion. So you can see there's a close relationship between the first and second law, which is actually true of all the laws. So let's get to the third. Newton's third law of motion says that for every force, there is always an equal and opposite reaction force, okay? This is kind of a fun one because it, it, people like to say, you know, for every action, there's a reaction, okay? Which is a simplification of it because what you should be saying is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Also, people get a little confused on, on what the opposite part means. Like, what is opposite? Does it mean like good and evil, you know, like white and black? Like, what's the opposite? The opposite means direction. So if I push with one force this way, so this is the force of pushing, well, then there is going to be an equal and opposite force, again, opposite direction, pushing back. So this would be the force of push back. And this applies to every single situation. There is no force in the universe that doesn't have another reaction force, okay? This law is known as the law of sometimes actions and reactions, but also the law of force pairs. Every force comes paired with another. If I push on the ground, the ground pushes back. We talked about this in the previous lecture with the scale. When you stand on the scale, you push on the scale, the scale pushes back. That's how scales are able to measure your gravitational tug, your weight, okay? Because of Newton's third law of motion. Well, not because of it, but Newton's third law of motion helps us understand how that works. Here's a thought question, the third from the chapter. How does the force the Earth exerts on you compare with the force you exert on the Earth? Think about Newton's third law. They're equal. The forces are equal. The force that you pull on the Earth with is the same force as the force pulls, that the Earth pulls on you with. Isn't that remarkable that you pull on the Earth? Well, you have to, that's just the way it works. So. Why doesn't the Earth move? Well, of course, because it's so massive, right? So the Earth can make you accelerate, but you don't make the Earth accelerate, at least not to any, anything close to a measurable amount. So what have we learned in this section on Newton's three laws? Well, we've learned that Newton changed our view of the universe. He discovered these laws of motion, and he also discovered the law of gravitation, known as the universal law of gravitation, sometimes even known as Newton's law of gravitation. But we'll talk about that in a future section. He realized these same laws of physics were identical in the universe on Earth. They apply everywhere. We use these laws when we talk about galaxies, right? Just like we use them when we talk about, you know, things rolling around at home, you know? Objects falling down, sliding. Physics labs with blocks sliding on ramps, okay? It's, it's so, so universal. So what are Newton's three laws? Let's recap. The first one was that objects move at constant velocity if no net force is acting on them right? That constant velocity can be zero, by the way. The second one was that force equals mass times acceleration. And the third law was that for every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. All right. Well, 
there are also some other laws in astronomy. It's not just Newton's three, which I suppose you know, because you know about Kepler's three laws as well. They seem to come in threes, don't they? Well, we're going to talk about some conservation laws, but we'll do that in the next video. So please check out the video for section 4.3, and you can watch that one next. Bye for now.